Hi folks, Doc Jake from Sioux Nation Ag Center here. Now, most of us have areas in our pastures that are a little more overutilized than they should be, and other areas that are more underutilized than they should be. Considering we're celebrating so much over 40 hundredths of rain this week, we're probably gonna need about every blade of grass we can get to feed the cows this summer. So the question becomes, how can we make the most out of the grass we have? Now, one way we can do this is by using a temporary electric fencing system. Temporary electric fencing allows us to portion off the pieces of the pasture that are not fully utilized, place the cows on them, and then get them to graze those down. Now, some of you may have worked with electric fencing in the past and thought, boy, this is really not very handy for my day-to-day -day use on the cattle operation. But I would tell you that these Gallagher systems that we have at Sioux Nation Ag Center actually work pretty easy, especially if you aren't used to using electric fence. Here, I'll show you how they work. So to start off with, we have our fencer unit. This fencing unit is really pretty simple to work with because it's battery powered as well as has that solar panel. And what's nice about it is, is this whole unit just sits right on this T-post. Battery, fencer, the whole nine yards. So you just set that T-post so that this fencer gets good sun to keep the battery charged. On and off is pretty simple. Just flip this switch one way to the other. And then to put your uh, hot wire and your ground in, it's these little knobs, which these knobs then, uh, you can just unscrew them and put the wire in there. I mean, this is pretty doggone easy to work with. A lot easier than some of the systems that we had back in the days when I was younger and we were doing this around corn stock fields. Now, another thing that makes life really simple with this Gallagher fencer is hooking it up to the fence. Super easy. I clip that onto the fence and it's hooked on. Same thing with the ground down here. Ground rod runs right there. It's a clip right there as well that I hook it onto the ground rod with. And one thing that is really nice with what we're set up with here on this system is that ground rod there, we don't move. We simply just rotate this fence around this post setup so that we get different pieces of grazing which makes it a lot simpler to get done. And let's face it, if it's simple to get done, you actually do it. Now in this specific situation, you can see that using this electric fence has really helped us graze this left side of this pasture. See, the way this pasture is set up, this left side's on the wrong side of the hill from where the cows always wanna be over here. So this side gets grazed pretty good. Well, this side, eh, not so much. So we threw this electric fence up right here along the ridge line, and the cows have used this side on the left. Now, they're not gonna get to use it anymore. We just got that little bit of rain, and so we're gonna give this time on the this side on the left time to regrow, and we're gonna move this electric fence over to a different spot so that that spot can be grazed down. It's another spot that really doesn't get as much use as we'd like to see it get used. Now, the other thing that I like about this fencing system is, is it doesn't just have that wire. It uses this white electrified cable. You can see Generic Rancher Ron just really booking it here, rolling this stuff up. You know, that wire, you've got to have a really a good machine to work with it. This, it's just got that little plastic roller to roll it back up with. Super slick. So Generic Rancher Ron, what do you like the most about this system? Well, a couple things. With the fabric uh, woven with the wire, it doesn't twist and bind because with, with straight uh, aluminum wire, once you get a twist in it, that's just a place that's gonna break uh, somewhere down the line. The second thing, I can keep all of the excess on the spool when I get to the end. I just wire the excess up to the post. Therefore, I don't have to break the wire. And then that doesn't later become a splice, which is not nearly as conductive, uh, you know, where you have a, sli a splice is where you don't have a slice splice. But this allows us to use this same spool for varying lengths uh, and uh, cover a lot more ground with that same spool. Neat. Now, Generic Rancher Ron, since he's so excited about how you don't have to cut the wire, wanted me to take this video for you to show how that works. Basically, he just takes the slack out of the line, but he's got plenty of slack here to work with on this end. And he makes his, uh, he makes his tie here like this on that insulator. Now, line set up the hill. The fence is tied here, 
But when you want to move it later, all you have to do is untie that knot and roll it all back up. So the roll just gets hung on the fence over here. No cutting, no splicing, none of that hokey balokey. It's pretty rad. There we are, tied up and ready to go. Just the big thing is when you do tie it on there, make sure you don't accidentally ground it out somewhere. Now the biggest impediment to using this system of electric fence is the one sitting right behind us here, water. We've got to make sure we've got good water for the cows when we're grazing them. Now. This is a big challenge in a lot of South Dakota because we utilize stock dams so much for water and there's not a lot of other good resources for water. If this is the case, think about your individual situation and the area that you want to graze better. Does that area have water at some points during the year? Then let's get those cows over there to graze that during those points of the year when we still have water. Also, consider if hauling water is a good idea. If it's an area that isn't grazed very much and you've got to choose between hauling water and buying hay, Hauling water probably pencils out a little bit better than buying hay does. So we think with the fence set up how we've got it, we can probably run 30 cows out this side over here for about a week. And then we're gonna move that fence from being tied on down there over more like in line with those trees or just to the left of those trees. Get about another week or 10 days. And then we'll move it over more in a straight line, straight north and south, get about another three weeks there. So what would normally be grazed down in two and a half weeks, we'll now figure we'll get about five weeks of grazing because this surviving grass that's not being grazed, it now has twice as many leaves or three or four times as many leaves to gather that much more sunlight to make that much more growth before we start to graze it down. So folks, that's the system that's available at Sioux Nation Ag Center for electric fencing. You know this year, if grass is gonna be short, we've gotta do everything we can to try to stretch our grazing because if cows don't have good nutrition, we won't see them raise big healthy calves or rebreed. So we're gonna keep looking at ways that we can stretch our grazing because having good grass is very important to feed that bottom line. Hey folks, it's been about a week since we recorded that first video and Generic Rancher Ron wanted to give an update of how the grazing went in the past week now that we've moved the fence. From here you can, I think, see the line where the fence had been. We moved it over yesterday, another 100 feet or so, 100 yards or so. Uh, the cows are just placing themselves right on the green grass and ignoring the grass that they had been grazing for a week. Uh, which is good because I don't really have a good way to separate the two grass pieces, the grazed and the ungrazed. Looks like they're just going to focus themselves on the grazed or the ungrazed, which, um, you know, is exactly what I was after. Hi folks, Doc Jake from Sioux Nation Ag Center here. I should probably look at the uh, camera instead of at the microphone. Now, one way to do this is through temporary electric fencing. Temporary electric fencing gives us the opportunity. Oh, my hand's in the video. Ah, look at that. I'm not used to using this thing yet. Wind. Shoot. So this connects to the ground rod down. Wait a minute. What's the? How long have these pliers been here? I'll be darned.